Hi, I'm Oscar Denford here at the Denford Factory and today we're going to be showing you how to install the F1 in Schools race system on the F1 in Schools race track. So after unboxing the race system you should have all the components that we have here. So a finish gate, a start gate, two start boxes, two start triggers, a power cable, sensor cables and a 25 meter network cable. So now we're going to take each of the components and place them down step by step to show you where each of them First, we have the start gate that we place here at the start of the track, and the finish gate that we can place at the end. So, place the finish gate here over the finish line. Now that we've placed the finish gate, we will start by putting in the centre cables. There are three centre cables one central long one, and two outer short ones. The shorter of the cables goes in to the side sensor, through the side hole, and into the input. This is then repeated again for the other side. As you can see, the sticker on the back of the finish gate shows you what input goes in where. And this is the centre emitter, which is placed in the centre of the track. So underneath, you can see there. And then again, round through the side, and then into the centre emitter input. Now that all the sensors have been connected, use the 25 meter network cable to connect the finish gate to the start gate by fitting it through this side, and then connecting it to where it says the connection to the start gate. Another feature of the racetrack are these grooves in the leg to hold the wires. We now take the network cable at the other end of the track, feed it through the side, and again, place it in the input that says finish gate. So here on the back of the gate, we can see this label with all the input labels on the side, showing you where to put every cable and how to connect it. Next, we will add the start boxes, place these on the track, and unravel the cable from the side of them. Then, again, feed the cable through the side, up the clips on the side of the back of the track, and then into the input. Then repeat the same again for the other lane. Again, through the side, up the top, and then into the correct input. After you connect to the start boxes, then connect the triggers. Unravel them. Then trigger at one end. Feed the cable again through the side of the start gate, and then into the input. Again, do the same with the other side. Finally, after the triggers, we will add the power cable. This is two parts, the kettle cable and the transformer. Connect those together. Plug in the power cord. And then again, feed the cable through the side of the start gate up the side and then into the power supply input. As you've just seen, I haven't powered on the start system yet. Um, and you must first place all the cables and connect everything up before turning on the power to the start system. Now all the cables are ready, then add the track banner before we can start. Then turn on the system by flicking the power switch and then let it go through its start procedure.
now to test that it's all working, you'll first engage the start boxes and then start the start procedure on a manual test. Then you take the triggers and then once the lights have gone out, you can press them independently and make sure that they activate the corresponding start boxes. When engaging the start boxes, do remember that there is a safety switch, just in case you do need to make sure that they will not go off during any time that they've been, once they're even, they've been engaged. There are multiple race options on the start gate. So here we have the manual mode. On the back, there is a small switch that will switch it from manual to automatic. This will mean that the triggers will not have to be pressed to start the race. Back on manual mode, if you then press the top button for five seconds and hold it down. We will then go to reaction mode. This is where you can take the racer's reaction times without activating the start boxes. Now the start gets set up, another check you can do is to make sure that the green light on the finish gate is on. This shows that the start gate and the finish gate are connected by the network cable. Now I'm going to show you what happens when the sensors are blocked. So here at the finish gate, um, we see that the green light is on. If the green light is on, that means that there is power to the finish light. Um, if there is a blue light activated when I block the sensor, um, you will also see this message appear on the start gate. This message will also appear if there is a blockage in the second lane as well. If both lanes are blocked, then you'll get both blue lights lit up and the green light will still disappear from the top. Uh, if there is no blockage in the track and this is still occurring, this may be a sensitivity problem with the sensors and we will cover this in a later troubleshooting video. So here we have the Deptford F1 in Schools deceleration system. Um, this is what we use to slow down the cars. I think it's the best way to effectively slow down the F1 in Schools cars. Obviously they do have to slow down very quickly in such a short, short space of time. Um, this is how you attach it to the track. First of all, it's best to place one edge of the deceleration system onto the side of the track, put it up against the lip, place the deceleration system down, and then place it 